Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. And Greg Coit. We are nearing the end of August. It has been gorgeous for me, super hot, perfect climate. So my thinking is to show you what I've done with my Angrecoids this year, the things that I've learned. This is not a wrap up of the season video, but as it's hot still, I'm documenting so as not to get ahead of myself as to what I'm doing. This is my Fastuoso, recently repotted into a small orchid top with just ceramus. And here's my Didieri also in a small orchid top, doing really, really well this year. Great roots, except I have to show you the one exterior root that we had growing outside has shriveled up on the tip. And I was actually really hopeful that it would grow down into the reservoir. So I don't know if that is a consequence of when I was changing the moss, I was going to remove the microfiber, but didn't because there's a root right up against nestled into it. So I'm like, okay, leaving that. But maybe the remossing or something. I have not actually gone and looked to see how high the damage is, whether the entire root is compromised. But this part out here definitely, definitely is. So I'm just going to go with that information and leave it well alone not bother because I do have more roots up here. So why are they here? And that is what I wanted to touch upon. As it's just been repotted, I don't want my fastuosa in the outside conditions just yet. This is the first year I have her in a pot and I am currently training her to grow towards the light. She was mounted before, pendant as you do, but now I've got her potted up because I want to be able to accommodate a strong growing orchid, which I'm thinking that probably I won't manage to do. If she grows bigger, I have to keep her more hydrated, more humidity, etc. That was my reasoning behind potting her up. Because here I've just pulled Mr. City Eye out. It was happening the same thing at the beginning of the season, grew two new leaves off the bat, bam, bam, one after the other really, really nicely, and then dropped four, and it was mounted. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I can't, I'm obviously not keeping up with something, and just to keep throwing fertilizer at something that's going to dry out pretty fast, that's also not good for the roots. So it got potted up, not into an orchid top, because the roots are actually much longer in their growth format, and I wanted to make sure that they had space to grow down and of course, some are now growing up and out. I'm okay with that. Roots are roots. And I think the orchid is actually doing really well. I'm not doing a tug test. I don't want to be that bold. I don't want to mess with the roots that are growing now. But she seems to be doing okay, unless this is a stress blooming. But I doubt very much that it is, because this Mr. Sidiae has always bloomed for me at around end of September, something like that. And actually, once she bloomed for me twice in within 11 months. So I'm not going to consider this a stress blooming just yet. I am happily surprised to see the spikes. I was not expecting anything for a year after messing with the roots. We know the story of Angrecoids, but I'm just gonna put her away back where she belongs, right here. I'm gonna excuse the terrible, terrible camera situation because any little change and flip and difference could make those spikes abort. I don't want that. They have been allocated for someone. So very bad, bad lighting. I understand that, but I wanted to show you my other angrecoid that I had mounted before and then potted up and has now gotten two spikes out. So yeah, I get the lighting, it's awful, I know. So let me just very slowly pan you back down. And that is why I'm saying these are, and the Mr. City Eye are exactly almost 
exposed to the exterior elements without being outside because this terrace door is always, always open. They get the full load of what Mother Nature has to throw at them, but I can protect them a little bit more if it gets too hot and windy, like we've had two days ago. I can really protect them and then just close the terrace door until that phase passes because here are sort of my needy orchids. And these two are here because they have to get more and more established. I had my two Leonis here as well in one row, but they are somewhere else now. And we will go and have a look because now we're going into an anti-clockwise rotation past Chao Praia. And we're going to go to the corner over there. Not an angrecoid, Orcoglossum kimberlianum, but lives here. And when I come here, every time I come and pass this, I make sure to have my spray gun with me and hose it down. And behind that, getting residual mist, is my Plectromynthus caudatus. I'm going to pull her out just now and we'll have a look. First of all, here we are with Angrecum bossery. What have I learned about this little corner of the property I live in? And this is new for me this year. This little corner with my fabulous high-tech unicorn umbrella has extremely high humidity because I'm using the hedge in the back as my humidity support. And it really, really helps. Early this year, I lost quite a few root tips. As you can see, there's one, two, and all the root tips that were inside these leaf joints, they actually stopped as well, and then they started branching and going nuts. I am so happy, even two roots coming out of the same leaf joint, and then let's look at the ones. I'm going to reposition myself, and we'll have a look at what's going on behind the scan break. So this is my Andrecum Crestwood Tomorrow Star, and you can see where the roots are going straight for where it's more humid. All the ones going back here are just long and juicy. Look at this. That's only one of them. Here's another one. Down is another one. And here is another one. And we are now at the end of August. I am so happy. So I have to say thank you to my daughter for giving me this fabulous little umbrella. It has opened up more opportunities for my angrecoids to not struggle so much. They can enjoy the heat and then they can also enjoy more humidity in my property than they would ever, ever get. I used to have these in my blooming alley, but clearly with roots like these now, they don't fit there anymore. So this is going to be their forever home as from March onwards until it gets too cold at night which is probably mid-November. So here's Angrec and Bossery. It's kind of leaning towards us, which is a shame. I would prefer it to grow a little bit more upright. Maybe it'll correct itself come the later angle of the sun. But look at that root from the beginning of the season. I have not lost the root tip. It's a shame that it's going off into this weird angle when there's so much humidity down here in the drip tray of the orchid top. But, you know, I, I'm just being greedy now. I have that massive root tip on the go throughout the entire hottest part of the year. It's a first. And the same here in the back, during the hottest time of year, it's growing another root. Say what? Be my guest. Be my guest. And it's growing, obviously, enjoying the fact that behind here there's a hedge. When I come out with a big hose, I don't spray them down with my hose because the water is rubbish. It's garbage. There's no way it's coming close to my roots. But I do take them off a little bit and I really give this hedge a big spray down as well. And then there's more humidity. And I just do that like once a week when I'm cleaning up and watering all the other potted plants. But yeah, I wanted to show you this little setup here. What a little unicorn umbrella makes for a difference. It's given my Angrecoids a fabulous, fabulous summer. Best summer ever. I'm so happy 
so it's given me my best summer ever with my ingrecoids. I have lost a few root tips from my Holka Blossom here, but the amount that have been replaced and have not died and now are just wrapping themselves around the Toya log there. And look how much moss I'm growing despite the fact this is at the end of August. This is October, November stuff. My little microclimate here, I think as well. Let me pull the cold out as well. I don't know who watches this video. If you're with me from the beginning, you will know I actually had this one bare root for a long, long time. And not a single root that I had kept trying to grow would stay active because I kept lowering it into its own bucket, right? you know, watering up, down, up, down, messing with the root tips, even though I wasn't touching them. But still, every time you lower it into a bucket, you're ineffectively actually messing with the roots. So I was going to lose it if I didn't do something about it. And I potted it up into Lekka with self-watering. It has still not extended this root, which is concerning. This leaf oh, just came off in my hand, started yellowing, but from the edge towards the trunk. Not concerned. You can see how many I've lost from this side. I've had a lot of problems with black blotches. The first two years I had it, I, I thought it was a fungus. But here we are in the most high humid area that I have now in my property. And these are the blotches that it created last year. I was very concerned. You see that at some point I started cutting the tips off. And now I've just thought, you know what? I'm doing the best I can. I really want this orchid, but I also need a marker to see, is it spreading? Because I can be chopping away Happy Larry and I don't actually have a marker to see if it's getting bigger. I would like to believe it's not getting bigger. I would like to. I would like to believe that now, after almost five months, I am seeing the middle leaf actually growing. I don't want to be trying to make things because I'm so desperate, but there's something about this thing that is starting to look a little bit different. And when I hose down the Hulk of Blossom, in the morning, everybody gets hosed down with a spray down, not a hose, but you know, my spray gun with uh, fertilized water every morning. And then throughout the day, I go around with just plain RO water. My caudatus lives behind the Holocaust Blossom there and gets residual spray. At this point, the reservoir is empty, but with all the re residual spray it gets, it keeps has it having the humidity around it. I didn't want to push my luck by filling a reservoir on roots that aren't used to such high humidity. In the beginning I did and then I backed off. Now, these roots are looking quite shriveled, but they're not dead. The orchid is not pot bound, but I feel resistance in the pot. I'm not saying I've got it figured out, but I'm closer now with trying to make this orchid work and grow for me in my environment than I was five months ago when I thought I'm going to lose her. I find Plectromynthos cardatus one of the most gorgeous, gorgeous angrecoids out there. Oh, they're all pretty. What am I talking about? But I, I really want this one in my collection and I was very happy to find it. If anybody in Europe asks, I got it from Großwechner Orchideen in Germany. And it bloomed for me my first summer. And I thought, well, this is easy. <laughs> and then, not a light since. So, in my opinion, I have my theories about why this is now working. Almost after a year and a half of struggling, and I think I might still lose it. But if we can get it through to spring and I can draw more conclusions about it and I would like to then do a video as to whether it blooms or not but why is it still with me and what is my thought process. 
um, there are some theories that I've got based on in their natural habitat. I used to live there as well. And I can tell you my lungs do not react the same if I go there now as opposed to when I was living there permanently. Acclimatization, if that is a word, getting acclimated is huge in the orchid world. Huge. And not just because, oh, it's a bit colder from where they come from, but I think air pressure and not just humidity, but the pressure, barometer air pressure has something to do with their well-being as well and how cells can collapse if there isn't enough of that air pressure or density in the air around. And I'm not talking humidity, but I'm not a scientist. It's just what I feel as a human being going back to a climate that I used to live in 24-7, 365 days a year, sometimes 366, <laughs> depending on leap year. But now I go back there, I go on holiday, and it is a completely different ball game for my lungs. That's the kind of principle I'm observing the plectral mintos codatus with. But I cannot draw 100% conclusions until I can see what she does. For example, extend me that root. I would like to believe I've seen an extension on this leaf. It was stuck down here, I think, for the longest time. The longest time. So this all of a sudden became not just an engrecoid update, but look at my plecromentos caudatos. <laughs> okay, enough of that then. Let's go and look at Jomelia aborescent. So, Jumelia, arborescence, almost, almost finished blooming. Oh, what a cute little companion it was for a while. Normally lives next to the bossery in the area we just saw, but not while this gorgeous little precious addition bloom was around. It came to my blooming alley where I could enjoy it. So I just wanted to show that, show how much moss it's growing. I've already pushed it back from the base a little bit before, so that you know, I mean, I don't mind moss, but stay off my base, yes? Uh, we have winter coming at some point, and I don't need this. I, so I do keep the base clear. Do what you want all around the rest of the soap dish. I was about to say pot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do what you want around all here. Stay away from the base of my plant, and you and I will be just fine. So just in lava rock, finally got a bloom. I think... We're on our way, and the only thing that can take this one down now is me being complacent. So let's not be complacent. And down here, I just want to show you how the Zobenikofia is doing. This is where she lives. You can see how deep the shade is here. There's not much light, except for now, due to the angle of the sun, the afternoon light will shine through the little bit of grating just on this part of her for about an hour. And when I say afternoon, I'm talking 7, 7.30. It's like the weakest of the sun and the hottest time of year, the weakest of the sun. So, But she's looking fine. Trust me. Um, I'm not seeing, I've seen one um, black spot here, but I think that was there before. And all the leaves seem to be absolutely fine. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful that uh, the repot into Orchid Top will be its forever home, just like all the others. Yeah, let me go and show you Leonis where they are now. And here they are, on the east side of my property. The little Leonis are along with my top guns. Yep, on the east side. Whereas they used to live on the west side by the terrace door that I showed you earlier, together with Didieri and Mr. Sidii and Fastuosa. But I brought them over here because I want them to get more light. I would like to see some blooms. I have seen a few blooms elsewhere on the internet. I just say the orchid room and sustainable green. And I'm like, where are mine? What is going on? So whenever these two ladies are finished forking the blooms and there's some out there to share 
I would like mine to be the ones to be able to bloom. So I brought them actually over to the east side where they get a super bright light for about five hours now in the morning behind a screen curtain. And they're doing really well, I say, despite my big Leonis is now dropping a leaf, even though I, I don't let them dry out. I, if I don't, if I can't miss the top, the sphagnum moss is wet, I missed around the edges. So you can see that the root growth is doing really well. <laughs> I love orchid top. Look at this. And I missed around the edges in the morning. Again, with like all the others, they get 300. What is this? They get their 300 parts per million all the time. And then during the course of the day, I just miss around the edge of the orchid top so as not to have them go wet with their trunk wet bed but you see the roots are doing fine so a lot of light a lot of humidity down here despite being the east side but they have survived a very hot wind as well down here and then of course it helps when I do come with the hose and I spray along here that really kicks up the humidity up a notch on this lower shelf and my little one is doing quite well as well oh here big one is growing another leaf that would be the third this year for me that's awesome and the little one here has also got a new leaf growing which would be the third this year now my leones have a tendency of dropping leaves when they grow new leaves and i can see that we have got another one of those things happening so i've only lost one leaf here so far and i've gained three I've lost three leaves here and I'm about to, well about, in a couple of, maybe in a month or two, I will probably lose this leaf and it'll drop the other one as well. But as long as they're growing like this, there's no real reason to complain. So I'm not going to. The blooms would be nice. But like I said, when the other two ladies are done working the blooms, maybe they can send some over to southern Spain so we can have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Jomelia. And yes, I've moved it back to its location. It was happy here. It created a bud here. It opened its bloom for me here. And then I took it to my blooming alley to enjoy it. But I'm putting it back with the big ones, big brother, big sister. And this is my little baby Jomelia. And I hope that it will continue to do well and who knows maybe we'll get another bloom soon thank you everybody so much for watching i have to say that i'm quite happy hint hint Eldato's over there yes i see you but i am quite happy with this little solution inspired by my daughter and that unicorns are best friends forever and help in creating little orchid microclimates and everybody's happy my daughter has another beach umbrella by now anyway so this is mine now <laughs> thank you so much everybody for watching i hope you enjoyed my little five month road of discovery regarding my angrecoids here on the med i appreciate having you here you have any questions if you have any suggestions i would love the suggestions bring them on either way let me know what you think let me know if this helped let me know if i could have a little bit more tweaking going on to make it even better for next year because when orchids grow in size demands increase i've noticed that this year as well thank you i babble take care everybody bye